What's up everybody? You're watching Model Aviator. I'm Adam. This week we're reviewing a brand new plane from FMS, the 1500mm Cessna 182. Now this is not an updated FMS Skytrainer. This is a brand new mold and it's officially licensed by Textron Aviation. We'll get into all the details, but first we're going to show you how it goes together. The manual does a good job of taking you through the steps of assembly. It is very quick and it's glueless. The part count's relatively low. You'll start by putting your tail feathers onto the rear part of the fuselage. The vertical has a tongue in the front. When you route the wire and bring it down into place, there's a hole in the bottom. That is for your single carbon spar for your horizontals. You'll slide the horizontals into place until you hear a click and the tail section is together, no screws needed. Now you'll plug the wires from the tail section into the front part of the fuse, slide it into place, and you'll use two machine screws, one on top and bottom, to attach the two fuselage pieces. The main gear attaches with a gear plate and four screws. To install the front gear, you need to take the hatch off and remove the battery tray. It is only held in with one screw at this time. You'll slide your nose wheel strut into place and then attach the control arm through the servo arm with a single screw. The wings have automatic electronic connections. There's a single carbon spar. You slide those wings into place and they now have locking tabs that you can manipulate with just the push of a finger. The struts are tab and slide. You just put them in the tabs and slide them to the rear to lock them in place and they're marked right and left. At this point, you'll go ahead and install your receiver of choice underneath where the battery tray is going to go. Go ahead and get it bound to your transmitter. All of the push rods are pre-installed except for the elevator. You're going to want to install that. Center all your controls and get whatever pre-made and set up on the airplane you're going to get done set up. Then you can replace the battery tray with four self-tapping screws. The antennas are tab and slide. Balance your prop and install that in your spinner and you're ready for maiden. The 182 has a wingspan of 59 inches. It's 49.2 inches long. Our example weighs 4 pounds, 5.6 ounces, ready to fly with a 4S2600 pack. It has a 3541-840 kV motor, a 40 amp ESC, 7 9 gram servos, and it's recommended for 4S2200 to 3200 packs. With a wingspan of almost 60 inches, the 182 is a decent sized model. It's a bit big to be considered a park flyer, but given its nature, schoolyards and parks are absolutely a place that this could be safely flown as long as the pilots pay attention to their surroundings. It is sold as a plug and play, which means you choose your radio protocol and install your receiver of choice yourself. A full range receiver is of course always recommended. It comes in two color schemes, the red or looks like burgundy to me that you see here, as well as a blue version that you can purchase. And these airplanes come as a five channel airplane out of the box. You have elevator, rudder with a steerable nose wheel, you have ailerons, slotted flaps, and of course throttle control. The first feature is the quick assembly and the first thing that comes to mind is field assembly and disassembly. That makes storage and transport a no-brainer because getting this airplane together and back apart at the field is going to be very simple with the tab and slide struts and the push button unlocks and no wires to deal with on the wings. You have a push button, top loading hatch, you get a lot of room in the battery bay for all the recommended size batteries and then some. You have a pilot figure, seats, very nice clear windows that could absolutely be utilized for FPV. You have a detailed instrument panel and a couple of yokes, and that is just the beginning of what is quite a bit of scale fidelity. Being a new mold and being licensed by Textron Aviation enabled FMS to go all out with this. The outline is very accurate. The mold has all the proper panel lines, the corrugated control surfaces, all the antennas are there, the prop and spinner are correct, the gears in the right position, it looks correct. The paint job is correct on both of the color combinations. The nice thing about the burgundy one is they don't have an end number or an identification number so you can print your own custom end number and put that on this particular paint job if you'd like. They're able to utilize the Cessna and the Skylane on the tail because of the licensing. That's a nice touch. 
and it has a full set of very bright LEDs which really set the look off. There's one other new feature. This nose gear Oleo, you'll notice that the bound takes a bit more pressure and the rebound happens very slow. I believe, I'm not certain, FMS didn't tell me this, but I know they're all like that based on talking to other reviewers that have these. I think the reasoning behind that is to circumvent the issues that we have with nose gear oleos on lightweight foam airplanes that all have springs that are way too stiff. It takes a lot to compress them and then the rebound happens instantly and violently and that's what causes that on landing quite often. So that may very well circumvent that. Be sure and stick around for our final thoughts. We're going to touch a little bit more on the wing LEDs and the decals on the tail. All in all, this is a very well done, very nicely appointed 182. The manual has all the pertinent information to get you through to a successful maiden. The suggestions for preliminary setup in here are great. They give you a CG, control throw, push rod placement. Expo is largely a matter of preference, but really all of it is. This will get you in the air and you adjust from there to your preferences. And that's what we did. This airplane doesn't come with a reflex gyro installed, so we decided to go back to basics and rather than put one in there, we just put an AR620 regular sport spectrum receiver with no stabilizer in it and put a pure airframe setup on this airplane to see just how good we could get it dialed in without one. And spoiler alert, it's a 182. Flies pretty doggone good without a stabilizer. Doesn't mean you can't utilize one, and if you fly in a big bunch of wind, you may need one, but for normal flying and calm conditions, this thing flies really good without one. We flew it on HRB 2600 four cells that's right in the middle of the suggested range. They don't say anything about three cell packs, but we flew it on three cell anyway. We flew it on a Spectrum three cell 3200. Another spoiler alert flies pretty good on three cell, so that gives you a lot more options as to what you might have in your battery box you can fly this airplane with. So the setup page is next. You can pause that and see what we did to get the airplane dialed in the way we like it. You might like that setup for you. And then check out the flying. There's three cell flying, four cell flying, 1G stall tests. We do a grass landing and takeoff, some smooth surface takeoffs. It's all there. Check it out. We'll see you back here for our final thoughts. This is our clean stall. Full back elevator now, it just kind of fades to the right wing but never really drops and a very easy recovery. Full flaps down now, dirty stall again, all the way to full back elevator. It just drops the nose and fades to the left wing, but never breaks, and an easy recovery.
There's plenty of power on four cell for whatever kind of sport aerobatics you might want to do with the 182. The 182 has decent vertical, flies a very smooth aerobatic line. When it comes to sport aerobatics, I found that it would do pretty much everything except the stuff requiring tons of rudder. It has a pretty small rudder, so snaps and knife edges aren't something that it favors, but it will do just about everything else pretty easy. That's as close to a snap as I was able to get. Looked a lot more like a really tight barrel roll than a snap, really. When it comes to inverted flight, it's stable there. doesn't require a ton of down elevator. You need to keep up a moderate speed. You can't get real slow inverted, but you certainly don't need full throttle either. With full flaps, it slows right down. It's very stable there, and as you saw in the stalls, it's very forgiving as well. Shooting touch and goes with the 182 is a lot of fun and I mention that because we flew our battery pack all the way forward all the way to all the way back. We experimented a lot. It doesn't change a lot of the flight characteristics other than with the battery all the way back getting the nose up and touching on the mains is easier but it will do it with it all the way forward as well. It handled the grass landing and takeoff very well. That grass was also wet, but to be fair, it is well manicured at this field.
With the flaps down, getting a mains first high angle of attack landing does require some throttle manipulation. This is going to be a full throttle pass on three cell with a vertical climb. Now obviously that's not going to set your world on fire, but that's going to be plenty of power for the way a lot of people like to fly. The Cessna handles basic sport aerobatics on three cell just fine, and that includes inverted flight. It probably looks like I'm boning simple touching goes. I'm actually not. I'm trying to do a one-wheeler, which with a tricycle gear airplane is pretty difficult to do. However, airplanes in this configuration, 150s, 172s, 182s, because of the tight tricycle spacing, they actually do it pretty well when you get it right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Not my best day trying that, but I got a couple of decent ones. We'll take it. kick off the final thoughts by circling back to the two things we said we'd touch on a little bit more earlier. First thing is the decals on the tail, the Skylane and the Cessna decal. That's part of what you pay for when you get an airplane officially licensed is being able to use their actual logos on your model and it's important to get them right. You'll notice that they're crooked on our airplane. On some other reviewers' planes, they are straight parallel to the horizontal like they're supposed to be on an actual 182. I'm sure FMS will get to the bottom of the inconsistency in the application of those, but if you get an airplane like ours where they're crooked, pretty easy fix. You can use the ice cube method to get that decal really cold and carefully peel it back without pulling up any paint, and then you can just replace them and put them in the right position. The other issue we found is the wingtip LEDs. You'll notice here that the navigation lights, the red and green on port and starboard, are actually in the forward-facing landing light lenses, and a solid white light is in the navigation light lens. To be fair, navigation lights are not supposed to blink. They're supposed to be on all the time. There's a third white flashing strobe that is usually right beside that on the center of the wingtip. So I get what FMS is trying to do. They're trying to kill two birds with one stone and just make the nav lights blink. That's fine. But they need to be in the center lens, and the white light that is always on needs to be in the forward-facing landing light lens. And you can make that change. Go underneath with your hobby knife out of sight, out of mind, and you can change the position of those two bulbs, and you're good to go. Again, for some people, this is not going to be important. It's a bit of a nitpick for others that care a lot more about skill fidelity, especially on a simple general aviation airplane where you don't have a lot of other bells and whistles like you do on a Warbird. They're going to care more. Either way, it's our duty to inform you, so you're informed. We covered most of the airplane's flight performance and our impression of it during the flying. I will say it is a very docile aircraft if it's set up to be so. has a very docile stall characteristic, very easy to recover, and pretty capable in the right hands if you set it up for that. Now, can this be a first ever trainer? It could. It has some intangibles that I think trainers should have. Three axis control, steerable nose wheel, tricycle gear, high wing, docile, and forgiving. And it is all those things, but it is really nice. It is kind of a full featured scale general aviation airplane. I still think the best purpose built trainer on the FMS website is the 1220 millimeter Ranger. It has a bit more rugged, actually a lot more rugged nose gear. It's just much more simple. It fits the bill and can teach you to fly for a little less money than this. So while you can use this as a trainer, I think they make a better trainer. I think this is best suited as a second airplane where you can keep it looking nice, maybe learn to fly scale, learn to handle flaps, and of course, you can learn some aerobatics in capable hands. The 182 can do any of the sport aerobatics that you'd expect a more scale outline 182 to be able to do. So pretty good performing airplane and it checks all the boxes FMS intended for it to check in that respect. When it comes to price point, it's $299.99 for a plug and play 182 this size that's this full featured. I think that is more than a fair price. Now, FMS asked us to feature a couple of other accessory products that they've come out with, so we're going to do that now. As we told you before, the 182 doesn't need a gyro, but there are people that just like to have them sometimes, sometimes for the self-leveling possibility if you lose orientation. Some people fly in the wind. They have come out with the Reflex version 3, and the nice thing about this little piece of kit is it is Bluetooth compatible. So you can take your phone, you download an app, and you can make changes to the airplane from your phone at the field without having to 
take your laptop. That's nice. If you have access to Wi-Fi, you can download specific setups like the setup for the FMS 182 and just incorporate that straight into your Reflex. So these are available on the FMS website now. They are $36.99. Nice piece of kit. The other thing they wanted us to feature is this little Predator battery checker. You plug your balance lead into these prongs like a lot of them. It tells you how many cells that you have, the total voltage, and then goes through each cell's individual voltage. And just a nice piece of kit for $5.99. Good thing to have in your flat box. So keep that in mind. If you decide that you'd like to put a 182 in your hanger, we'll put a link in the description where you can get one of those. And of course, we'll put links to these two accessories if you need a gyro or a battery checker. So you can get to that anytime you go through those links. It supports our channel when you do that. We appreciate it. Thanks. That's it for us. Great airplane. We enjoyed it. We think you will too if you're in the market for a 182. I don't think there's a better phone one out there. Just my opinion. Take care of yourselves. Happy flying. We'll see you next week with something cool with wings.